you do have two lovely horses on either side of you here. Can you introduce them to us? Yeah, we have Ruben over here and we have Jim and they are full-size Percherons and they are very good boys who pull the wagons and some of the farm implements and whatnot around the park. So tell us a little bit about the history of Percherons in this area of the country. So Percherons started coming to Canada in about the 19th century. Um, they started off kind of migrating from Quebec and spread over. Some of them did come up from the States. Uh, Alberta, Alberta is a huge hub down south towards Lethbridge area, a little closer to Lethbridge, is a huge hub for a lot of, some of the big names of Percheron horses um, down into the States and all around, they were kind of sought after. Uh, there's lots of breeders, lots comparable to some of the other breeds that are out there, but there's lots of different breeders across Canada from Quebec to BC, the entire spread. Uh, we had three horses actually come from Manitoba this year from a per from two different Percheron breeders out there. So it's still a breed that's trying to hang on, even though horses have been replaced by lots of the tractors and, you know, machines just in general. When they were brought over, what was, what was common for them to be brought over with? What other livestock? Um, a, a trend that has been noticed has been the, the horned um, Herefords. So it seems that people who have brought Percherons over have actually been inclined to supplement their ranches with Herefords. Um, Herefords are a pretty hardy cow, so it kind of makes sense that they started coming up to Canada um, around the same time as ranches were developing. They just, they do better with weather and whatnot. So um, it was just interesting to me when I found out that it seems to be a coupling. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about uh, the, what Percherons were used for when they were first brought over to this area of Canada? They were used for settling the country. Uh, they hauled the wagons as people moved west in the country. Um, they tilled the fields. Uh, as the workloads got bigger, the grain, the grain loads got bigger, they needed the bigger horses. So even if they started with smaller horses, eventually they needed to have a bigger draft. And the draft themselves actually changed in their build. They went from kind of more refined down to squatter, stockier, and then you would kind of have your more going to town ones and you're working the field horses, different body styles. Um, Percherons were a large part of uh, hauling around city vehicles before we had automobiles as a regular. Um, but it was, they were a lot of farm work. Now, at the end of uh, start of World War II, we kind of saw a bit of a drop off of Percherons being brought in from France. Why was that? Uh, yeah, so the funds started to dry up with war times, but we also sent 130,000 horses over to World War One. Uh, it was 10% of the horses that went to World War One was Canadian horses. A large portion of them were Percherons. Percherons were great for moving the big guns and all of the supplies that the military needed. So there was a huge drop off there. But as we were giving our horses away, the funds weren't there. People were trying to get by. So it was hard to start replacing them. Um, and then it was a double edged sword because once the funds started kind of coming back, people started having a bit more money. The engine started coming around. So it was easier to have something that you didn't have to throw hay to all the time and that could work longer hours and not you know feel the repercussions of it so it did start to drop and that's when they started going over more to uh, fashion or trying to breed for the best um, and they went to shows less for the field work and building a country you showed me a very nice picture uh, can you tell us a little bit about the picture and your connection into Percherons yourself? Yeah, so the picture that you saw was my grandpa. Uh, he's riding one of their 
family Percherons um, who would have probably worked in the field that morning. And then that evening, my, my grandpa put a saddle on him and wore his best duds and he went to go court my grandma. So that was how you used to date back then was you'd show up on your horse and uh, he has a beautiful line of Percherons. Our family actually originated from uh, Le Perche, which is in France, was in France. And that is where the Percherons got their name from. So the people in La Perche um, are the ones who kind of designed, we'll say, the Percheron over hundreds of years. And as the needs, as the needs changed in the world, they would actually alter what it was that they were breeding for. So longer legs or stockier legs, uh, more ability to pull or fancier with longer refined necks and looking more flashy. Um, so my great 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 grandpa came from Hirsch, moved to Quebec, and then my great great grandpa moved from Quebec to Saskatchewan, and that's where um, the Percheron in the photo ended up being from. Was my great great grandpa brought Percherons, a um, couple of Percheron studs and some mares and actually had a small Percheron farm as part of his ranch. And that's what he used for farming. Amazing. I was trying to just, and just quickly talk about the, the role Percherons play here at Heritage Park. We love the full size Percherons because they're bigger, they can go longer, um, longer days. The loads are a lot lighter for them. Um, little crosses are wonderful for us to tack up. The big boys are a lot harder for us to tack up but they make the work easy. So to be able to pull all of the wonderful guests around to come out to Heritage Park to have a nice wagon ride with the horses and see some big, beautiful horses, these guys have just been absolute all-stars for us. Uh, we can't actually thank them enough. They have huge hearts and they're always happy to see people. The pressure on themselves are just so well known for their kindness and sweetness and gentleness very easy to work with um, they also put on demonstrations we work the field every once in a while and do some farm machinery work and whatnot and you guys are happy to do it so laura anything you'd like to add that i haven't asked you uh no we just we we love these guys they're super sweet super kind uh, they love kids they're like giant puppy dogs, and I mean giant. I mean, if you take a look at their feet, they're about the size of my head. But <laughs> the last thing they want to do is, uh, you know, hurt you or step on you with intent. So they're, they're just sweet to have around and such an important part of our history and our heritage in forming this country.